Hello! Hi everybody, it's Hi. Gianna and... Sky! Hello! Yay! So I'm doing a series called Future Fidget. Sky is a very godmother in training. I have very in training. I come all the way from the Kingdom of Australia, <laughs> as I say, like... 500 times, times a, a day, day every day <laughs> and i have my own youtube channel it's life by sky so feel free to check it out follow subscribe oh like, my gosh all comment. that good stuff all that good stuff we decided to like do a discussion of some things you need to consider if you're considering this role considering working on a cruise ship considering working on a disney cruise ship our top five things we wish that we would have known yeah before definitely. we got on the ship no oh no yeah number one here we go so i'm gonna take the first one the first one for me is definitely you need to if you're coming on you really have to have a creative outlet or some like kind of thing that you can pour any like negative energy into because a ship is such a small space to get frustrated you can't just like walk out and leave because there's nowhere to go and something guaranteed will happen like almost every day to upset you and you can't take it out on the people around you for me it's been like writing down all my feelings eventually like i just started writing like free writing i just literally write whatever comes to my head as it comes to my head sit down for 20 minutes like pour my heart out otherwise like some more like high calorie options True. is <laughs> ice cream or like eating flows every night that can also like lead to a very like quick cycle, a vicious cycle. <laughs> if you don't have something like a creative outlet you're gonna like lose your mind yeah you're gonna definitely. Lose it. like it's not gonna it's not gonna work well for you very long my second point is that it's really hard to maintain a work-life balance when you're on this ship you could really love this job just like we both do like we're both really passionate about this role it's honestly a dream job for both of us, but we're forced to do it to an extent that you wouldn't be able to maintain. <laughs> you really can't. Like you can't it's, live it's, this way. It's not no. like, what is the word? Sustainable? It's, it's not sustainable. For like a human. Um, Work-life balance is something that's very difficult to achieve and it can be frustrating when you see that other departments have like more flexible schedules that kind of allow them to participate in some of the crew activities and things like that that we don't really get an option to immerse ourselves in if you are passionate about doing the job it's kind of just falls back on yourself to like bring something onto the ship that's going to help you maintain that balance and make sure that you know you set aside like for me um setting aside like tuesday night just to socialize has been really important because it's like that one night where i can kind of like have a couple of days to recover afterwards if you try to like socialize at every like opportunity that comes up you'll wear yourself down and you'll be exhausted but if you try to just work sleep work sleep work sleep right. you need to go out as well because there have been like weeks it's where i integral. don't and then yeah. yeah and then you feel like garbage you're like i don't mm. want to be here so you need to you yeah. even if you don't want to go you got to do something at you some do. point you really do keeps and you sane you definitely need to expand like outside of your department yes that's, that's huge my third point you have to have friends outside of your department like i wish i had known that going on the ship how important it is to have outside perspective and like to remember that you know you just because you work like with the same what, like nine people every day especially our role it's very small yeah yeah it's a very small space we're very confined and it can get very like you can definitely adapt to other people's ideas and energies you kind of need to just break it up and have some friends on the outside Point four, health and beauty. So this mm -hmm. ship, my God, and I don't even know if it's like, cause mm. boutique, very small, there's like what, nine of us? Yeah. Like a lot of the girls there are like, come from backgrounds of like beauty or mm. come from backgrounds of like, they do makeup and things like that. So all of us are kind of like into that. But on the ship, like maintaining. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anything is like impossible. Oh, yeah. Your hair is gonna fall out. Your yeah. hair is gonna break off. Like your, I'm not trying to scare anybody. Everybody, like halfway through their contract, is like, oh my god, I feel disgusting. Like mm -hmm. I feel, I you can't you, like not wait. Your eyebrows will become easier to maintain because they will become just one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth though. Like <laughs> all of the water that we wash our hair with is chlorinated, so mm -hmm. it's just like. And I know well, this isn't like a huge thing, but it's like every little thing. It adds up, you know what I mean? Like every little thing starts to yeah. like weigh on you after a while. When I when I first started joining on the ship, like I just like had a lot of like physical changes happen to me all at once yes. and it was very overwhelming and I felt really like not myself and I felt like very depressed. Like at the start when like I was going through all these changes, it took a while 
for me to adapt to not like having so much sleep and I ended up like losing a lot of weight at the start and kind of thing like it's kind of like eased now but it was very difficult at the start. And two, it's like weird. Your weight either like goes yeah. way up and you're getting like yeah. so beefy or like you're going way down. Oh, or yeah. Because like it's just the food. It's mm. And all the food is all, you know, from the ship, made on the ship. Nothing's really like super fresh. Sky loves avocados, right? When was the last time you've seen an avocado? Like you don't oh. get, you can't. There are just things where I'm like, I would kill somebody to eat a strawberry. And that's like not normal. Like your brain gets rewired. I would like Definitely. do terrible things to get like a spinach leaf. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not like the, I'm yeah. not gonna say it's like prison food cause it's not. But there's just small things that you don't realize. I mean like honestly, I love and I appreciate like all the effort that goes into the crew mess and all oh, the consideration. And like they do lots of things to make sure that everyone's perspective is considered. But at the end of the day, like there's just some small freedoms that are taken away from you that you don't really realize you appreciate so much when you're in the outside world, like being able to choose what you're having for dinner that night and being able to cook something or being able to literally leave your house and like go to where you want to go to eat. Like, yeah, the first mm. time I, went, when I was on the ship, um, ordering I, something off a menu, like, yeah, everything. That was my first time at Palo. I had the sorbet and it oh. had one blueberry in it. And I remember being like, <laughs> yeah. being like, okay, this is gonna be like a huge moment for me, like eating this singular blueberry because I hadn't had a blueberry in like three months. It reminds me of like the Christmas, like the Muppets Christmas Carol where they have to like <laughs> share one pea and they're like cutting it, like savor the moment. Yeah, I ate the blueberry and I literally shed a single tear because it was like I hadn't tasted a blueberry. I, right? I cried multiple times over food. Oh, like, that's, I think that's my biggest thing that I'm like, we, because like, so for the last like three mm. weeks, I haven't gone to the mess and I've just been eating like snacks in my room and I've mm. been like literally eating peanuts for like every meal and it's changed my brain, I think. <laughs> but like when I go out to eat, it's like, oh my God, like, <laughs> or when I get off the ship, like I got off There's the ship an emotional, yesterday. Like there is an emotional totally. con connection to but food. But that's like a big thing about the ship is like a lot of stuff here is like fully about survival. And it sounds mm. like, like people like think like, oh, they're I crazy. I eat so fast here. Like when I'm on my break, you do. I you eat so fast. I inhale it so that I can't even tell like what or how that much follows I'm you, eating. Though, because when I'm off the ship eating, like, yeah. you, you know, when you go to the, the Merit Mall, you eat something and you eat so fast without even, re because everything here has to be so quick because you have no time to waste. Okay. Number five, mm -hmm. lack of growth here. Like movement, mm -hmm. lateral movement in, in the company um, at all. I have the opportunity to get off the ship and work in the parks. Basically everybody else on the ship doesn't have the same opportunity as me mm -hmm. because a lot of them are not American. So like for Sky, this yeah. is like pretty much her only option to work for the company. Yeah. So she... It's very, it's like, honestly, it's the biggest downfall of being here because I love working for the company and I want to expand within the company, but the US laws just don't really allow for that to ever be hired permanently in the States. Any other capacity, like pretty much within the Disney company outside of Australia, I need to like prove legally like that role can't be fulfilled by an American first. I've heard so many people here say oh I would never be doing this if I could work in the parks or oh I wouldn't be here if I could do something in America. For me to take a job in the parks as a fairy knowing like Sky is like legitimately the like the most magical fairy that we have Stop. in the I'm not even Stop. saying I'm, okay relax you know it's the truth she constantly is getting like guest comments and she like consistently has had like the same level of energy since the day she got here. So you're very magical and oh, it's, so are you, it's, Gianna. It's, yeah, but my level of I, I've dropped. I've dropped off like I have because it's it's really taxing. It's it's not fair, I feel like that like she couldn't fulfill a role mm -hmm. in the parks because I think that Disney would benefit from it. And it's Yeah, that's that's something that's upsetting because it's hard like when I, I feel like I have the drive to do it and I want to do it and I feel so motivated but it feels like there's like just a big brick wall where it's like no matter how hard I'm pushed I'm not going to be able to push through it you know right so with our department boutique on the Disney dream there's nine of us and we have a manager above us and then we are technically considered merchandise like 30 merchandise with a manager above them and then a manager who's above both of those managers. And that's it, that's like all of us, really. And the only place to move up would be 
like a managerial position. And that takes you away from the role. Right. Like that's basically an end to you being a fairy godmother. There's not really any progression within our role or our department. There is trainer, but trainer mm. is kind of like, a, oh, we don't have anybody to do this right now. It's so different than the parks. They just kind of throw you into it. Not like a, an official like, oh, okay, you did this and this and this, this is good. You are becoming a trainer, so you're gonna take these classes and then you're gonna be, you know, it's just kind of mm. like, okay, you're a trainer now. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know, I feel like there's just like more of a structure within the park and yeah. if you want to take the next steps, like there are the resources around you to make it happen. Like if you want to pursue a leadership position or, you know, grow your skills or what be it in the parks, I feel like that's more easily done. Like parks you have the there. ability to do it if you have the drive. Whereas you could have the drive here, but like... It's just timing, honestly, here mm -hmm. because you couldn't even move up unless somebody left or... Yeah somebody moved so there really isn't opportunity no opportunity there's number five